right, welcome back. Welcome back to Delta Green Impossible. <laughs> wow, I forgot the name of what we were doing, guys. <laughs> oh. It is early in the morning <laughs> where I am. Uh, welcome back to Greenbox <laughs> Gaming plays Delta Green Impossible Landscapes. Uh, starting out strong here on uh, episode 27. We just had an excellent like, 45-minute conversation together, Joe. What happened? I, it's I, stage it's, fright. It's, I chose to throw a clot in my brain right now is what happened. Uh, at least we got it on camera. At least we got it on camera. Uh, that would be a bonus content. For science. Content. Watch Joe for die science. of <laughs> I am joined by my friends. Jean, playing Benedict. That's right. You stop Hello. drinking. Say something. Okay. Sorry. I'm usually okay. lost. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> I am joined by Dace, playing Benji. And Brad, playing uh, Hank. <laughs> hey, hey. <laughs> stop <How's> drinking. <it> <laughs> <laughs> it really changed it up this go around. <laughs> <clears throat> All right, keep us on our toes. Yeah. Don't know what to expect. How you guys been doing? What's it been? Uh, I, been great. I, I I I know that I spent been spending all of my time uh, listening to this new album by this uh, band. Oh, what uh, what album, you, Joe? You, you heard about these guys? Uh, it's called I, Min- I think Midnight I Sunlight by these guys called the oh. Gilded Creatures. Uh, I love them, man. Some real bangers. Real bangers. Oh. Uh, We're not nah, even man. being... I really <laughs> legit. <laughs> are, you, are you guys not going to engage? It, oh, you guys suck. It is legit one of my favorite albums ever released ever by anybody, uh, and it just so happens to music. be... That can't possibly be true, fuckers. but thank you. <laughs> yeah. It, well... Yeah, thanks. How was the release it. party? It was great. Uh, we had very cake. modest. We had cake. We had cake. <laughs> <laughs> Lemon That's cake. So adult. I love it. <laughs> Savannah yeah, of... My roommate, yeah. uh, Savannah, I got home and she had like made a little banner that said, Gilded Creatures. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's nice. Like, and stuff. That's nice. <laughs> she got a cake and we just went over to Brad's and had cake. And that is a 30-year-old release party. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's... Uh, I yeah things have definitely uh, slowed down. I have a uh, you know I'm I'm in school and most of the people in my you know most of my peers are uh, they're like you know twenty three to twenty six ish, and you know they still have the energy for like let's do a big friendsgiving this year and stuff like that. I'm like I I just don't want to do that. I just <laughs> I just don't have the energy for anything like that. Yeah. See, I feel like that hasn't I'm, caught I'm, up to me yet. Like, I still feel like I have the same energy as when I was like 26. Well, that's the methamphetamine talking. Oh, is, uh, yeah. <laughs> I don't have any yeah. teeth, but I have energy. <laughs> I, I, have, I have no teeth, but I'm energized, motivated. It's like so, graphs there. Um, the amount of teeth correlates. <laughs> the amount of energy, energy and motivation level. past the age of 30. <laughs> Well, it's like, uh, you know, it's like, man, uh, Brad, you know, he's such a, you know, like when people go to like a, an interview and they're like, I'm too motivated. I'm a little too perfectionistic. What is your, yeah, what is your worst trait? You know, I'm just too good. Yeah, Brad, what's your, your worst trait? What's your worst trait, Brad? <laughs> Brad. What's your worst yeah, trait? Tell Brad, us. what's your worst trait, Brad? Is it meth. your keyboard skills? I just keep saying meth. <laughs> <laughs> meth. <laughs> <laughs> What's your best trait? <laughs> yeah. It's, yeah. It's meth. It's yeah. meth. It's, it's, it's meth. It's meth. It's meth. It's yeah. meth. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, um, speaking of uh, mood altering drugs, uh, let's get right into uh, Delta Green Impossible Landscapes, shall we? And that's right. It alters my mood. Maybe it doesn't alter your mood. Truth. But it alters mine. Because when I get done, I am angry. Every time we get done with this, <laughs> I'm disappointed. Uh, <laughs> and you yell at your dogs. I yell at, you I really yell at my take dogs. it out yeah. on the dogs. <laughs> <laughs> it was a weird transition, but here we are. All right. Uh, here we are. Boston. <laughs> Boston, Massachusetts. 2015. Our crew. M. Cell. Hank. Benedict. Benji. Our... In the Samahina home, home, after uh, after having scouted it out a little bit, you guys are kind of tracking down these individual vectors 
of the, this kind of king and yellow infection that's going out. Uh, and it seems that a lot of things have been centered on the Dorchester, and that is certainly on the horizon for you guys, I do believe, but you guys have recently tracked down Nurse Sam and Hina, head nurse Sam and Hina, who you met at the Dorchester facility. You found a book with uh, the name of who you now believe to be her husband, Philip Samahina, in Elias Barbs' house, your old uh, quote-unquote handler, who turned out to have assigned you guys this mission uh, erroneously, not really with Delta Green. Uh, After reconnecting with Delta Green in Vegas, you guys turned over Ophelia Citri and are tracking down other leads here in Boston. Uh, Last time, you guys managed to infiltrate the Samahina house while the downstairs neighbor and the occupants were away uh, to find the place find a few interesting interesting things one uh, the place seems to be painted from top to bottom with uh, linseed oil uh, which you guys realize is part of this weird kind of acrid smell of the place and you guys came to the conclusion this place will go up like a match uh, if anyone stuck a <laughs> stuck a flame to it um then you found this other weird smell, and you discovered this weird dark liquid leaking down into the downstairs bathroom, uh, where it looked like people have been drinking it. Um, you guys didn't have a yeah. you guys didn't have a lot of time. Oh, you also found a bottle, one of these bottles that you've been hearing about, with the name uh, Henry Samahina, the 16 year old son of Philip and Esther. You guys didn't, and we get... filled it with the the fluid, didn't we? That's right, you filled it with the dark... We added a spot of tea. Yes, just the the littlest amount of tea. And, you know, I guess later we'll get the opportunity to ask, uh, you know, Benedict how he he, uh, prefers his disgusting black bile tea uh, (laughs) with cream or sugar. But I can't wait (laughs) to get there. So you... You really finally got that tea he was looking for. You finally got it. I'm so Uh, pleased. You guys made it... Again, you guys didn't really have a chance to like really look into things. You guys saw, or Hank, saw that in, that Philip Samahina was walking down the road. He tried to stop him, tried his damnedest to convince him not to come in. Didn't work. You guys had a surprisingly successful... Um, <laughs> you guys were, were surprisingly successful at uh, kind of grabbing a hold of and restraining Philip Samahina. But then, lo and behold, it seems that there is a some type of strange, unnatural illusion going on uh, as Esther Samahina then appeared in the place of her husband wearing this long, strange cloak with these symbols of the unnatural all over it. You guys then decided to head upstairs and begin looking around didn't get into the investigation too much on anything specific. You, I think, mainly wanted to like clear the house and make sure there's no one there. You got upstairs, you saw the room of what you assume to be Henry Samahina, with some weird, strange diorama of a two-sided city. A city which is reflected a top and bottom city. Uh, which is something that reminds you of something. Uh, you guys then went into the master bedroom. You saw that there were these like, this strange setup where on the bed were the clothes of uh, an older man and a teenage boy, uh, like laid out, all clothes pinned together. Then you went into the bathroom. And you went to the master bath. You discovered the source of this fluid. The master bathtub is overflowing with this thick black, disgusting mixture. This concoction, which smells of death and industrial (laughs) mixed up solvents. Um, You see that one of the, that the mirror in this room, like many of the other rooms, has a vague yellow sign outlined in it. And you found a recorder there on the uh, vanity where you're able to hear several recordings of primarily of Henry Samahina uh, and you guys listened to it and were got pretty much a front row seat to the slow spiraling decline of this young man's psyche into the absolute madness of Carcosa and the King in Yellow 
And He's then, probably just going through a phase. It's just a phase, Mom. <laughs> it's just a phase. <laughs> you know, I did, God, you know, th- that, that takes me back. I remember my <laughs> king in yellow phase. When I was, <laughs> you guys, it's really embarrassing when you look back. Yeah, you, when, when you look back at it, you just you're just like, Ooh, what I, was I wearing? It was so cringy. Why? It was why did I liquefy my dad? Do you remember? Yeah, do you remember that time? <laughs> do you remember that time when so, when John killed his dad and liquefied him in the dude. bathtub <laughs> and his, and his <laughs> so king in yellow phase? Made so cringe. So cringe. Uh, Ugh. God, are kids even doing that anymore? <laughs> in in thirty years' time, all of that's going to come back, and it's going to be very fashionable to do that. When all. the king in yellow yeah. face comes back, yeah, at all. Yeah, yeah fashion yeah. is cyclical. It's cyclical. They do say that everybody's going to be yeah. liquefying their dads. Yeah, everybody. That's so, so as thing. so you know, so those thoughts are going through Benji's head as he is standing here in the bathroom <laughs> about when this will be popular next, and. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Hank and Benji are upstairs uh, in the bathroom together, and Benedict is downstairs with the uh, bound and hogtied and duct tape and mouth duct taped, just uh, sitting on her. Yeah. Well, like, so you guys did such a good job, and again, we get into this weird place with the like literally the math and the mechanics of the game, where I think according to what you guys have done, she basically would take a negative forty percent to any of her efforts to get out. But her strength yeah. is so low that that means she has zero percent chance. <laughs> so nice. So it's like it's called a good job. It's a good job. Let me. You know, Team Lady Puncher is does one thing really well. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I want to point out at the beginning of the session. Someone in the chat said, "What woman will they end up fighting today?" <laughs> <laughs> You tune in for a reason. Oh god, <laughs> I, I don't want it to it's be this not way. about choosing. We're not. It's, it's not like, intentional. It just keeps happening to us. I mean, Joe went to the extent of it was a dude, and he's like, "Oh, she ha- It has okay. a okay, a right. make believe robe on that turns her back. <laughs> it's in the book. It's in the book, guys. We're just yeah, doing the book. Sure it is. Sure it is. <sighs> Oh, shit. All right, first first guy that we come out of the house and we see, we're just going to go next, punch him in the face. The next man you guys see, we need to, you need to, we need to equalize this. Up. Yes. Okay. All right. Equal opportunity employers here. Equal opportunity <laughs> ass kickers. I want to... Uh, yep. Okay, so we've basically made sure no one's in the house. Uh, Sam Ahina is uh, tied up, laughing yes. hysterically under a gag of sorts. Um. So, do we still don't do know. Not call me a gag, sir. <laughs> uh, the only thing Hank would be concerned of after we cleared the house is like we the where the sun is is still unknown. So, I think right. if it'd be like a good idea, so he just doesn't barge in, lock the door, and then pff, maybe, I don't know. Like if he's uh, even alive. But maybe we can read yeah, and talk I have a about fi- this. I have a feeling he's like g- not somewhere on another plane or some okay. crap well, like well, here's that. The thing. So that, that boy's in Carcosa for sure. Yeah. So mm. it's been two it's been two weeks, so let me re- read you the last line of the thing you heard on the recording. Okay. Bound away into the mirror, I sent in oh. dad first. Come find me there. I sent in dad first. I thought they liquefied the dad in order it's, for the ritual to work. It's Is that dad helped out. We don't know, man. It's a bunch of crazy uh, nonsense. Man, who can say? We, well, you know, no. you know, Benji's got a role in a cult. Like, there's got to be some <laughs> on what reference to uh, just the ritual in general, like the, the oh. purpose of the ritual, okay, and, like mm. the way the manner is carried out. Like, there's got to be some parallels. Okay, yeah, give me a, uh, give me that, that, uh, that roll. Let's see what you got. Oh, this is my favorite thing to roll. Give me, give me that, that, I got that sweet occult. Isn't it just, it's stupidly high that he doesn't even need to, need to roll? Well, yeah. but I think we should roll anyway. That I could fail. Yeah, he doesn't know how to do ten, taxes, 90%. but he knows how to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He 
doesn't know how to fill in a twenty under ninety. Yeah, he can't fill in a W two to save his life, but man, oh man, does he know about the unnatural or about the occult? All right. Um, so immediately, Benji, you know, considering this this idea of like, you know, keep in mind, let's think about the difference between mechanically. Let's think about the difference between the skill occult and unnatural. Occult is like the human manifestation, the non unnatural manifestations of different beliefs, whether they are, you know, like religious practices, uh, legends, you know, things like that. They are like, occult is more related to the human manifestation of the history and science around the unnatural without being the unnatural. The unnatural are things that are so divorced from reality that they bend the human mind. Okay? That would be like truly understanding the nature of Cthulhu and what what it is. Like what the entity of Cthulhu would be. It's like uh, knowing as the an example. So it's like knowing the origins of a ceremony versus being able to execute the ceremony. I feel like or a something cult, like that. A cult would be like, okay, here's the ceremony that these people did. A natural would be Okay, this is these are the unnatural beings that they learned the uh, ritual from, and what the ritual actually does. Um, in these the are like the principles sense. of why this was made. In a way, kind of, it's like it gets it's nuanced, right? But but when we, so when Benji is thinking about this with his vast <laughs> occultic knowledge, this this kind of behavior is mirrored in a lot of uh, a lot of times. Um, but specifically with your experience of um, of your experience, like with the King in Yellow, with the book itself, the unnatural play, you probably remember something about these dark, decadent um, rituals where people are, um, you know, debasing themselves and gorging themselves on dark, on dark, like uh, disgusting yet pleasurable wines you know like there's this idea mm. this is that this even if this is missing the mark for what's being talked about you can see that reflected in like in the play that this seems to be someone who knows maybe they know it maybe they don't this is reflected of something higher even if it is misses the mark um so yeah <clears throat> okay. Um, well, uh, I don't know about you fellas, but we need a. There's a lot of crazy stuff going on in this apartment. Uh, uh, I think we need to look a little bit. Sp- what in the bathroom? There was something specifically. Yes, there was you like guys, a the mirrors. Well, yeah, there so was like the, a door or something. Yes, in the... Um, oh, if the you, tiny door. Do you guys have roll no, 20 up? we don't want to look at that. We don't want to look at I that tiny door. Up. Okay, yeah. So, do you guys still see the map then? I will yeah. take us over. Who said map? So, did that roll tell me anything about the intent of the ritual? You basically... You would say that, the, you would say that it's probably is either you you can come up with two things either a it's kind of this idea of like absorbing the power of the paternal like it's just like a very common kind of theme throughout like occultic history um or or or, and or that it is reflective of the remember i've told you about like the king in yellow is about like there's this big party and that, yeah. the, in a lot of ways, it's kind of like a tale of like, oh, like, hedonism doesn't pay kind of thing. But at the same time, it's like it's very much a very common part of it, like this decadent uh, consumption of the world. Uh, you think that it might be reflective of that, like the kind of to make something that is strange and beyond. Also, you can't imagine someone sane would have done this. Yeah. Let's keep that. It also sounds like they definitely drank this crap. <laughs> you saw downstairs, and that's a whole other thing. It's like if someone drank this, they should have died. Mm. 
anyone oh, yeah. who solvents anyone who will i mean it's literally it's it's bleach it's denatured alcohol it's dish soap like it's just it's everything it's it's you shouldn't you shouldn't drink this kids at home listening don't drink that stuff tide pods no you <laughs> you stop right the second bradley <laughs> mm, yummy so, okay I reckon, I was thinking about this before, Benedict having having a good deal of time to think on this lady that's squirming underneath him. Uh, seeing those mirrors as well, he would probably be thinking of cleaning things up at this point. Like, he's always in cleanup mode. I think he was a janitor in a previous life. But Benedict would want to go and smash some glass with, with symbols does. on them. He has a propensity to light things on fire and smash glass. So, um... Well, you're in the downstairs. Whoa. Um... And those of you... Those of you who are watching the VOD, I don't know if you'll see it on... Reflect on the VOD, but, you know, over here... I'll, let me let me zoom in a bit so you guys can see a little better. Actually. We can see the... Whoops. So yeah, so is so that's what Benedict's going to be doing. Well, hold There's on now. I don't. As they we come don't want to. I don't know if Hank would. So so, you, <laughs> we need to have a group meeting. What we want to do He's, first. <laughs> yeah, you guys need to come downstairs. Need to I guess. Yeah. All right. So yeah. we basically relay everything. Uh, to Benedict, and Hank's like, uh, I don't know, fellas. Uh. I, I don't see a clear path forward. The only way forward is through. We gotta drink this here daddy juice to go to Carcosa. No. <laughs> no, give me that. No. We're not. I would I would have rather you have never have said daddy juice. <laughs> but here we are. <laughs> I mean, you guys. You I guys mean, daddy juice. You guys, what? you guys have a lot of things in this house that you can look into in greater detail. Yeah. Um, right. Are we all in agreement that that's what we need to do first? I mean, I, I definitely want to look into this door thing in the bathroom. Yeah. Um, okay. Yep. Well, the only other thing that I think we need to think about is uh, what are we, what are we even doing with our lives, men? What are we really doing here? We just keep getting in tussles with women. We're supposed to be cleaning things up for 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 Delta Green. Are we going Benedict, about Benedict, this wrong? Now is not. Are we the going time about this wrong? Existential crisis. <laughs> but it's this important. Is, uh, how many more houses? How many more demons? from Demon Whip 101 are going to be embroiled in this. Do we need to just summon them takes. all in one place? <laughs> you know, it's this is wild for that. Chase. It's really interesting, actually, because, you know, on one hand, you have Benji. Benji's just... Benji's interested in diving into more unnatural shit all the time. He loves learning about things that are going to destroy him. Like, his motivation is set. Hank, Hank is very... Mild. Benedict... Like Hank has a has a good mission focus. He's still like in a way focused on Abigail and like trying to save everything. And then there's Benedict. Benedict just never wanted to be here. He you know? just wants to go back to his pigeon. From the very beginning, and Benedict didn't want any part of this. It was forced upon him, definitely, in a way that it wasn't with the other two. So why is Benedict here? What is his intention? There is no intention. He's just he's doing what he had to do. Yeah. Because he got yanked off of a bench because a piece of paper blew in his face. The right. poor fucking guy. Fucking, he was perfectly like happy. Like 1990. <laughs> Here you are. Right. Too old for this shit. All right, what are you guys doing? Too old. What's I'm happening? retired. What are we doing? <clears throat> so let's check Seems this like house. Seems like we're all interested in that door. Okay. Yes. I want my flashbang back, Hank. You did not use it. I will use it. Um. I'm gonna give you this flashbang, Benedict, but but you're on a short leash. <laughs> <laughs> don't okay, you, don't you go. So wild. let's all get our let's all get our pistols out and shoot the door open. <laughs> As 
one does. But uh, question mark. <clears throat> Hank will. I guess we can secure Samahina without Benedict sitting on her, and right. If you guys, so so like I said, it, basically she's already at a point where she's not going anywhere. If you want to. If you then want to, again, like, double down on it, like, maybe you guys found the duct tape now, and, like, you're fairly certain she ain't going anywhere. Yeah. Have we searched <coughs> okay. her yet? <clears throat> you have not. If you do, you don't find anything of that much consequence. Uh, one of the things you probably, you probably do find is you probably find three different IDs on her. You find... A, um, a nurse's badge with her name and face on it, which is very similar to what you'd have at the Dorchester. Um, and you know that her access pass gets you into all parts of the Dorchester facility. So, hmm. Oh, we can use that. That's good. So someone, someone that write sure. that down, please. Yeah. All access pass. Um, cool. Who, who's doing it? I got it. Okay. Okay. Uh, but then you also find another kind of nurse's like medical type badge with Philip Samahina's uh, information on it, with his picture and his name and the badges and stuff for where he works. And then you find a lanyard with a student ID on it for her son, Henry. Oh, oh she can shape it into him too. She's gone. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. I want to find out how she shapes it so bad. Benji wants. If Benji became a fucking shapeshifter. Well, it's probably got something to do with that robe. <laughs> it's the with robe. all the markings. Yeah, that on. robe that's lying in the corner there. <laughs> yeah, unworn. It's the robe that's on Benji's shoulders. <gasps> <laughs> or is that Benji? Is it actually the robe? <laughs> you haven't really looked at the robe, Maybe. have you? Well, let's let's take a gander. Why don't we? Why don't we take a gander at this robe? Okay. Um. Yeah. It's. So you you take it off, you know you've managed to get it off her, and Benji, Benji, you're looking at it. It is put together from you would estimate. You know, you ever do that thing where you look at a jar of jelly beans? And it's like guess how many jelly beans there are, and win a prize <laughs> every day of my life. Every day. So you're really good at that by now it's your because bank it's, account. because it's been it's been every part of your life. Um, you look at this. And you kind of are reminded for that because you would have to estimate that there are somewhere between a thousand and two thousand separate pieces of individual cloth putting this thing together. That it's a bizarre patchwork of, and like, it, it, you really have to ask yourself: Is each individual piece from something different? It is. Uh, it's, wow. it's 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 a little bit. <laughs> it's a little bit scary to think of the obsession that went into the construction of such a thing. Um, so it's like I said, it has these kind of like fractally repeating patterns, which from a distant look, kind of kind of interesting and kind of ornate and beautiful. Like in a way, like they kind of like they kind of have like a like an Eastern like a or like an Eastern Europe, Middle Eastern kind of feel to them. Like in this, the way it's stylized. Um, but as you get close, you see that inside these fractals down to a level that you think might be beyond what you can detect with your eye are the yellow sign. Uh, oh, like wow. Scattered throughout. Um, in that there are yellow signs made of tiny yellow signs, which are made of tiny yellow signs. Um, and, mm -hmm. and interspersed throughout, you also catch the images of several demon seals that you are aware of. Tight. Oh, Benji throws it on. Does he really? Oh. Okay. Yeah. Um, <laughs> one moment. Oh, Benji. Don't do that. No, Benji. Okay, you throw it on, and uh, nothing happens. <laughs> cool. Benji's Thank got God. a sweet new robe. <laughs> yeah, so, so, so you've, th you've thrown it on. Um, you, you don't know if there is something. So you have an unnatural skill. Am I correct? Benji does have a little bit That's of unnatural skill. Yeah, and it's pretty damn high. It's, dude, it's it's password protected. You don't have the password. You don't have the password. Uh, uh, you know that there are many unnatural rituals in the world that require you to do certain things in order to activate them. That, 
like a password. Like a password. I think you hit the nail. On the not head. like a pa- like not like a password necessarily, but you, like you, there's something else that you you think that if this has if the power is within the robe and not within Esther, you know, and that's a you know that's a, a possibility too. Uh, you would have to do something to activate it. Um, you could okay. Maybe it's what biometric. Is the, what is the occult equivalent just... of one 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 one? And then <laughs> one one two two. <laughs> then Jesus is gonna go through the occult. <laughs> nah. Can we? We're just gonna put a thumb up against it, and like repeatedly try different areas like of try the rope with where thumb. the thumb imprint is. Yeah. You 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 do not know at this time how to activate this thing. You can make some okay. rolls to try to, to try to figure it out. Um. Yeah, I'll worry about that uh, later. Um, I'll take it off and kind of bag it up for now. Okay. Like, uh, Looking interrogate. at Benji. Yeah, should should we talk to her at some point, or should we leave that Probably for last? Probably not here. It seemed like she was basically uh, laughing hysterically. So I don't think I think it's gonna be the same bullshit. Hank's like needs, enough. She needs a timeout. <laughs> enough of this. Do we have any drugs to calm her down? Yes. Well, we have drugs. We have the fucking crushed up knife bug thing. Oh yeah, you've got the you've got the seeds of unknown origin that you are led to believe may be involved in drug making. You can always give those to her and see what happens. <laughs> okay. <laughs> enough of this dress up. We, we got a job to do. to do. Okay. Yeah. Let's right, go find that enough. tiny little hole in the wall. Let's do it. That's kind of the first thing Far I think away. we. Okay, you guys go back upstairs to the small hallway bathroom. This is probably, you know, the master bath is attached to the master bedroom. That was probably what Esther and Philip used. You know, this is probably the bathroom that uh, primarily Henry used. Um, it's like a small hallway bathroom. Um, as I said last time. Again, like on the um, on the went on the mirror, you can see that someone has etched the yellow sign and piled up um, on the all around this mirror are books, which is the same in the master bathroom and this bathroom. There are piles of books all around. Um, everyone, give me because you're now you're in here and you're looking at it a little closer without you know. Uh, without just, like, having to go on to something else. Everyone who's in here who's looking at this, give me, um, like, an intelligence or an alertness check, if you want. Intelligence or alertness. Tell me what you get. Successful Benedict, 57 under 70. And failure for Benji. Um... It was a success for Hank on alertness, 13 under 67. Both Hank and Benedict, you're looking at these books. It, the way they are arrayed, it does not look as if someone stood here and piled them up. It looks like they have come tumbling out of the mirror and piled up as if oh, they were Jesus. pushed through the mirror. That is immediately, like, that's the way they're arrayed, and obviously... I mean, that's impossible, right? Um, so you guys, and as you guys have walked up, you had to walk past this area with all the sewing, like the landing of the third floor and the upstairs, the Samahina uh, is household, has been converted into this weird sewing area. Uh, it looks like Esther has been very, very busy. Um, now, uh, go, sorry, go ahead. Immediately, one of the things that you, um, I'll say, which one of you got the better, which one of you had the higher role on your success? Which one of you was it? Hank. Alertness from Hank. Hank. Higher being most distant from No, literally higher. The threshold. Num- numerically higher. Oh. Oh, then that was me. Yeah. Okay. Benedict, you look down and there is a, a symbol on the front of one of these books that catches your eye. It is the symbol of a kind of like a Pegasus type horse. You have seen this once before. Um, which I say once. It was on the back of the satellite phone. 
it was like a maker's insignia, like a uh, like the company that made the phone. And you see it now in this pile. You can just make out this this little Pegasus, like mid-flight. Mm. I don't know what to make of this. Hank kind of like flips through it. You, you know, if Benedict grabs it and pulls it out and, you know, maybe says that, like, I don't know what to make of this. If you hand it to Hank, so you, you guys look on it. It's a, it's a rather thin book. It doesn't really look to be like a novel. It looks to be like a, kind of like a workbook. Mm-hmm. Um, not like an academic workbook. Okay. Um, but on the front, it says Mental Illness in the Workplace and Beyond by <laughs> Devin Greenbrier. Uh, see, that's... You see, it's publisher information. It's published by Groiler International in 1986. As you begin to leaf through it, um, you come to there's a a page, and it looks like someone has filled out a lot of the information. And again, like it looks to be this kind of like one of those little work books that you would get at your job to educate people on how to deal with mental health, like something that the HR would do or something like that. It really has mm-hmm. that feel. Um, if you guys would please reference uh, the old roll twenty, I'd like to drop something for you in there. Um, what if what if Hank read it? The coloring in section, the mindful coloring yes, in section. Yes, the mindful coloring in section. If uh, Hank, could you, could we get Hank to read this for us? Uh, read the questions. And the <laughs> Example one: Ophelia S is a secretary for Sear Incorporated who has become preoccupied with her home renovation. All discussions are about the renovation, and no discussion at work can pass without her referencing the subject. Her manager reports this behavior. Do you A, inform management, B, inform human resources, C, inform emergency services, C, confront confront Steary? Citri. Citri. Citri, Citri. my bad. Uh, oh, okay, so ben- these are all examples of uh, ben- people why we know. Ben- why doesn't Benedict read example two? Oh, God. Uh, Maximo F. is a regional manager for Sear Incorporated, who has had a psychotic break due to the death of a loved one. He reports to human resources that invisible spiders are infesting his workstation. Do you, A, inform management, B, inform HR, C, inform emergency services, or D, confront Dr. Friend. That's Maximo Dr. Friend. Friend. And uh, Benji, what about number three? Uh, Abigail W., a regional manager for Sear Incorporated, fails to show up for work for two weeks. When she finally arrives, she claims to have traveled to a foreign country to marry a king. But her <laughs> demeanor is... It's a bit on the nose. And many times... And many say she is not herself. Should you report this to mental health services? Yes or no? About back to uh, back to old uh, Hank for number four. Example four: Mark R is a salesman for Sear Incorporated Electronics Line. Multiple reports from a hotel managers indicate he is carrying a porcelain doll with him everywhere he goes and speaks to it when he's when no one else is present. His work does not seem to suffer. Do you A, inform management, B, inform human resources, C, inform emergency services, D, confront Mark? And back (laughs) to Benedict, for example, 616. That's a bit of a jump from example four. Uh, Benjamin P. is a hard worker in public relations for Sear Incorporated. One day, he begins to talk about how he... His entire life is actually a giant ongoing play being put on by some unseen supernatural entity, like a god. His work ethic continues to shine even as he speaks about his this conviction more and more. Do you take off your mask? B, take off your mask. C, take oh off your mask. God. Or D, take off your mask. <laughs> oh, no. So, so which, which, so A, B, or C, or D on on number six one six? Hold on, are the are the correct are we, answers in the back of the book? Wait, yeah, flip to the back of the book for the correct answers. Is this a is this a choose your own adventure 
What's the next page? <laughs> I, I love the Which idea. Page do we go of, to? Of Hank is like flips to the back of the chapter where you have to turn the turn the <laughs> book is... upside down to read the answers. He's like, hold on. Well, the answers are like backwards yeah. text. Yeah. Uh, in all seriousness, this is obviously creepy. Yes. And we okay. can. I don't without discussing it. I think we all see the similarities to what is actually happening happening and the examples. Wait, 616 has come up before. Max That's the door number, right? Yeah. It was also our flight oh, yeah. number. It was also the number oh, on the no. phone. What? On the, on the satellite phone. Who do y'all think Benjamin P is? Oh, he's, he's a friend. I just imagine I'm the sure. two of you just, like, look at each other, like, just, just eyes <laughs> at each other, like, do we say it? <laughs> well, anyway. <laughs> so, yeah. So yeah, you guys are still standing in this bathroom. I have discovered this uh, this weird book. Um, <clears throat> now let's turn our. How about we turn our attention to the little the little door? There, sound good. That's what we all came for. The little, little doors, right? I'd rather not, if I'm being honest, to to Benedict and Hank. I'd I'd rather not do this. And you think there's one of them knife babies in there? I I just think knife babies, tiny spiders. Tiny spiders were mentioned. I, I, is anybody aware of the tiny spiders that, that were mentioned on this desk. piece of paper? That was a desk infested with spiders. It's I, totally different than a little door I, in the wall. I just want my discomfort to be noted by my best friends. Except for Mark. Marbus. There's something under- unnatural on there. We got to take care of it one way or the other. I understand the hesitation. This is true, Benedict. But as you have brought up, how many more houses can we raid? How many more demon sigils can we interpret? Part of me wonders if we just need to. If we're ever gonna find the answer on this plane, if we need to go back to the night floors to find the true answers. It's you know, it's going to be in this little door. As you, <laughs> is that what you say? As you say that, <laughs> as, you say that uh, as you say something about the night floors, uh, Benji, maybe you look down and you kind of look at the pile of books again and you see a familiar name at the bottom of one of the books. Roger Caroon. Hmm. What? It's a copy of Night Like Seas. the author? Uh. Is that one of the books we found in Chapter 1? Roger Caroon was one of the people at the McAllister Building. That was what building. he was writing. That was his book yeah, that he was yeah. uh, famous right, for right, already. Right, right, right. Um, that was confused as being a World War II. Uh, it's not a World War II book. Um, and you also see A World Without Doors, which is the one by Emmeline Fitzroy about the, the girl who goes into the strange city to fight the Phantom. Yeah, Benji will pick him up and flip through them and see if they're autographed first editions. No. <laughs> he flushes them down the Benedict, floor. <laughs> Benedict will, uh, in a weird hunch, he'll, like, try and shove a book back in the mirror. Uh, it acts very much in the way you'd expect a mirror to react to having a <laughs> As book a mirror. shoved through it. It reflects the light. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> But, but again, it's like, as you look at it, you know, there are these strange lines, and actually, so this is a good opportunity. Uh, what is Benedict? Benedict, make me an intelligence roll for Benedict, because he's the one right up here at the uh, mirror. Reading all the books. Success. 14 to 7. Yeah, you, you look, and you think that, you think that somebody has the, the lines on the mirror that you can vaguely tell make the yellow sign. They look to be literally the grease from someone's fingers having outlined the king in yellow dozens and dozens of times. The most disgusting mm. thing we've seen yet. Just some greasy <laughs> chicken like chicken finger tender grease. fingers. <laughs> chicken <laughs> finger grease. <laughs> Someone's just been eating buffalo wings and just right on this mirror. How is that? How is that worse than liquefied body wine? <laughs> I mean, it is, but how is it's it? It's just unhygienic. Because it's, like a, it's just gross. It's like, definitely more of a body tea. Let's not the, call it wine. The the industrial <laughs> solvents and dead body parts is just disgusting. This is just horrendous. I mean, 
greasy you fingers. Know, I'm, I'm gonna play my red card. I'm triggered. This is too much. This you is crossed too much. my boundaries. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. All right. Wait, what cards do we get? Do we get a triggered card? You don't get cards. Um, <laughs> I've been tri- I've Hank, been triggered so far back, so many times. Hank looks in this little door. Now describe the door. It's like a mailbox type. So yeah, door it's on thing. the opposite side. It is like a small. It's a square. It's a square door. It's about like probably like probably two feet wide by a foot tall. So like rectangular, wider than it is tall, and it's flat up against the wall, and it pulls down from the top. It has a handle, and it pulls down. Um, there is a sticky note stuck to it. Um, and I do believe it says I had it right here, and then I freaking lost it. Um, God. Hold on. I just had what the sticky note said. Why am I like this? That's okay. It says like, it says like, uh, it says like times two. Oh no, here it is. Uh, The note says times four bellhop and underneath it times two gangster. That's what the sticky note says? Yes. Times two bellhop, times two gangster? That is what it says. Okay. Hank pulls it down. Huh? Yeah. I mean, there's no there's no context for that, right? We uh, not that I'm... Uh, not ringing any bells? No, oh, not for me. Shit's getting ominous. The music started. Thank you. Yeah, sorry, that's my bad. Um... Hank opens the door. Okay. Despite the sticky note? <laughs> That's, look, look, as far as you know, there's four bellhops and two gangsters <laughs> behind this door. <laughs> That's madness. <laughs> behind it's this like you said, door. Benedict, all our answers are behind this door. Everything we've been looking for. <laughs> <laughs> I Bell hops gonna blow the case included. wide open. I imagine six people just spill out of this two by one door. <laughs> like a clown car. Just then they start running around in circles and then run out the building. <laughs> <laughs> like the gangsters are running after the bell hops, like very Scooby Doo. Yeah. All right. Benny Hill starts playing. Yeah. Um, you you open it up and you see that descending down from the small door at about a 45 degree angle is like a metal chute um and like now that you kind of see this it kind of looks like a like a laundry chute like something that you would see it's going straight down not straight down you know like okay. a like a pretty good 45. angle but pretty yeah, probably probably steeper than 45 not straight down but it's pretty steep 46 46. Thank you, uh, Jean. Approximately 46. I'm trying to help. Yeah. Is it Benji sized? No, no. This is, like I said, it's literally a foot <laughs> by two foot. Like, it's far too small for anyone to fit down. Nothing like that. Um, so, yeah. um, Benji reaches down in there and see if he can feel anything. Just into the darkness? Okay, maybe Benji signs a flashlight now. <laughs> <laughs> All right, um, you you shine a flashlight down, and um, you see again, like you, it's like it's like a kind of like a stainless steel, just rectangular chute that goes down. As you shine a light down, right as you do, you begin to see something down at the bottom. It looks like maybe it opens up like a long way down. And then a light comes on down at the bottom, and you see red. Not like a red light. And as you kind of like, you're peering down, trying to like, like, what the hell is that? You see that it's probably like a red carpet that you're looking down onto a plush red carpet. As you see, as you're looking down, you then see someone walk into view. Um, And you appear to be looking almost directly down on them. You can, they're so far away, you can barely make them out. It looks to be like probably a man, kind of hard to tell, uh, probably a white guy, like, but beyond that, like it's hard to tell. And they walk up and they stand and you see them shine a light up as well. 
like up at you. Can we see who it is? Like there's like it's Two literally lights. so far away that you can you can barely make out the fact that this is like um, a, a more masculine. Benji, white what guy. do you see down That's there? Uh, I see a dude with a light. And Benji's gonna yell out, "Hey, Mark, is that you again?" Your your voice kind of rattles down, and you hear vaguely the sound of you can see this person yelling back at you, but it's so garbled and so far away. And this is when you kind of become aware of this kind of drone that's kind of emanating up. Maybe it was a bit low, but as you're kind of like really trying to make it out, what you're hearing, you there's like this like mechanical clanking drone going oh, on, God. like from. Mm-mm. The laundry shoot, and you can see this person is standing there, cupping their hands around their mouth, like exerting themselves to yell. Don't think you can really make out what they're saying. Like they're that far away. <clears throat> does this look like like is this like a night force thing, or could it, does it literally look like it could connect to the building below us, or Ooh, is it like? Boy, I am glad you asked. There's Brad asking the big brain questions. Damn um, it! I just assumed it was the night floors. So well, Hank, yeah, it seems far Hank away. Hank goes and uh, looks on. So Hank exits the bathroom to to think about this. Hank exits the bathroom and goes around and looks on the other side of the wall, where this tiny door should open up to. It's the outside Hank. wall. Silly. Don't think about the stuff that we're it observing. It goes. That's your problem. To Hank. the outside wall. Um, and uh, I you would know. like Hank to roll me you know a sanity coming. check. <laughs> <laughs> Silly questions. This is why you don't say your thoughts out loud in this game. <laughs> you get punished. Fuck. This is a safe space. Success. Save my ass. Eighteen. All right. Under. Take- this is the opposite of a safe space. <laughs> it's exactly. Joe yeah, actively this denies his triggered cards. <laughs> this um, would have. This would have phased Hank if. Uh, he hadn't seen the those greasy fingers. Like nothing's gonna compare to that. Those no, greasy right now you're just like <laughs> chicken wing fingers on the mirror. Like <laughs> you, uh, so yeah, you see that worse. it goes out. That's... You're able to fit. You, you're able to kind of just like. I imagine it's not so much that Hank just grits through it. He just goes. I imagine he just like kind of shakes his head, just like nope, not go in there, and just like walks back into the bathroom. <laughs> Because you guys definitely there... have seen. So to answer the question, so I'm guessing... is this a night floors thing? Yes. Probably. Um, so I'm guessing, like, as Benji's saying this, Hank's kind of, like, not looking in there as well. And it was like, uh, does, does anyone know Morse code? Can we communicate with flashing the light? Uh, is it, first, before we do that, is it getting louder? It sounds is like it's just louder? a drone. Yeah, is it or is it yeah, just is like it indistinguishable hums consistently? Yeah, it's like it sounds like like I don't know, like machines that are constantly working at something very repetitive. It's not getting louder and closer if that's what you're asking. It's not okay. it's not for instance, oh, I don't know, the sound of a giant mechanical a spider, spider that's coming up crawling through a up shoot. The shoot. Nothing cool. like that. Cool. Cool. Uh, so, cool. That's not what that sounds like. You'll find out about that later. Glad. So, it's uh Thanks. <laughs> uh Can we say Hank knows basic Morse code or some way like there's got to be like I'm saying in Marshall's training and any kind of like law enforcement, there's got to be like some like consistent sing- signals like help, like basic things you could say. Are you say okay it for type sure. thing? I would say, and Hank is like an older school guy. I would say that you probably know Morse code. You also know that the universal sign for help in most situations is anything in in a series of three. Right. Um, so you'd like that's pretty universal. Um, but you probably do know Morse code. I'm gonna tell you if you start flashing it down there, you can barely make out the figure. Kind of like flashes back to you, and you think it might be Morse code at first, but you think it's just they're just flashing back because you flash at them. Um, and then as you're doing this, the figure then turns and walks out of, like walks to sut to the side where you can't see them anymore. And it's they've walked away. Um, wait, uh, uh, Hank? You know, what did you, I, yeah, what, what'd you say in Morse code? Swearing. You're like, Fuck you. <laughs> Damn it. I was asking about time, who. Hank. 
messed up the damn mirror with all the greasy fingers, but uh, I guess he didn't like that. <laughs> uh, how to? How to? What? Should I use Windex? Like in all serious code. In all seriousness, y'all, uh, let's write something on a piece of paper and send it down there. Yeah, that was my first okay. thought. Okay. Um, do we have a piece of rope long enough to reach down there? No, I mean, no. Uh, I was I was thinking more along the lines like, blink once if you're okay, blink twice if you need help type situation. You know. Okay. Uh, yeah, let's rip a page from the book. Are there any blank pages in this book? There are let's plenty of books around page. that probably have a blank page at the beginning, you know, like some books do. Let's do it. Yeah. We make a little. Does anyone have a better idea aircraft. besides saying like, blink, flashlight once if need help, blink twice if okay? I mean, is there another? I don't know how much we can. I want to say, who are you? <laughs> blink. <And then> send... <laughs> uh, how's he going to communicate that back? <laughs> <laughs> blink. No, no. Uh, we'll just send a fucking pencil down with a note. <laughs> but how's he gonna get it back up? That. And they can send it back. Yeah, okay. there's nothing. Gravity this is just, works this is cruel. Way. Okay. <laughs> what are you guys putting on this note? I want to say blink once if okay, blink twice need if need help, and then we'll also write who are you. <laughs> okay. <And> then... <laughs> All right. Yeah, you send that down. You send and it down. You see the got milk. Got milk. Okay. You send down a plethora of uh, very poignant messages. Um, and they, you know, like you either crumple it or like, do, you know, do you crumple it in a ball? Do you like just fold it up and send it down? Do you make an origami swarm? Paper airplane. Paper airplane. Straight down. You see it goes down and you see it hit the bottom uh, and sit there on the carpet. And you do not see anyone. Because he, w- he walked away, right? Yeah. Mm. You don't see All anyone right, come pick it up. I want to. Because Hank cussed him out in Morse code. I want to do one more thing before we decide to do something else i do want to roll a what do i want to i want to see if i recognize the room in some way or that carpet uh i guess this would be a alertness type thing it wouldn't be a search right yeah i'm gonna say I'm just going to tell you straight up, you do. You do recognize this carpet. It's the smoking room. It's Mark oh. Rourke's smoking room, isn't it? It's very, very similar to the lush red uh, carpet that you experienced in the night world. Uh, nice. <sighs> Specifically, is it like that? the bar room? It's uh, just, the carpet you know, it's throughout. just like the decadent hotel yeah. broad album okay. type what crap. Is- what did you? What all did you say on the note? Was it blink once for help, blink twice for what? If you're okay, a good time. <laughs> <laughs> Full milk. Okay, and then got milk. Okay. And knock knock. I, we're, no, we're not doing it anymore. You guys have sent the note. It's done. Um, Damn it. So yeah, that's your. And I, I'm gonna go and tell like you can like you can, you can stand here for a bit and you don't see any movement down. You know, no one comes against the airplane. But you guys are still in the okay. third floor um, of the San Mahina home. Seems right. like nothing to me, then. Let's close this I've, little door. Have we had our fun, both of you? Are we done with this tiny little door to <clears throat> impossibility? I just imagine all, that, I think, that Benedict saying that. He's like, okay, we're done with the little door. And as he closes it, the legs of a mechanical spider are just beginning to creep through, isn't he? Just <laughs> shams it. <laughs> Uh, let's just close it. <laughs> In all uh, seriousness, fellas, I think we should continue searching this place, but I think we will have to make the decision. Are we going to follow these people back into the night floors? Or are we just going to do the yeah. s- standard burn the place down, get rid of the uh, evidence? We don't have a lot of standard people procedure. rooting for us in the night floors. We kind of shoved an entire building of people into the night floors and then burnt their building. That's not true. You shoved like three people. That's not a whole building's worth. And I would the do rest, it again. You know, perished in the but. fire. 
And, and you know what? I enjoyed it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, you give me, give me a bunch of people <laughs> in, 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 in a corrupted building. I do it right now. I don't give a shit. But Hank, it will just so express that he around. is like. <clears throat> Yeah, let's continue. We have a couple more rooms to look at, inspect thoroughly. Mm-hmm. The bedroom. Hey, and, go is ahead. there an attic? There is not. This is the third floor, as far as you can tell. If there is an attic, I'm going to go ahead and tell you now. If there's an attic, there's nothing there. Don't worry about it. Okay. Um, but this is the third floor of this building. Um, but yeah. So, so you, have, bedroom. you have Henry's room, and you have Esther and Philip's room. I want to start with the bedroom. <laughs> yeah. What? What's up, John? Sorry, Benedict. Benedict is so tempted to just. This is where he uses his flashbang. It's for this tiny little <laughs> shoot that is flashbang sized. <laughs> <laughs> just throws the flashbang down. Surprise, <laughs> Do you do it? Got milk. Whoa. I imagine someone has just enough Blink time. Once if you need help, <laughs> throws a flashbang down. <laughs> Hell. Like ears ringing. <laughs> Do you need help now? <laughs> I bet you do. <laughs> I don't think Benedict would do it as much as I'd love to do that. John would do it. Do that. Uh, Benedict would I would do, do that. Let's just unload our clips down the chute. Just <laughs> blah, 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 blah. <laughs> Oh, God. All right. No, we uh, move on. We move on. All right. Do um, you guys go into what you want to do first, uh, Henry's or... Uh, Philip and Esther's room. Henry. Bedroom? Go to Henry's. Henry's. All right. Okay, you head into Henry's room. And again, like, you know, this is very obviously like a, you know, it's like, it looks like a teenage boy's room. You know, it looks like he's into hip hop and rap. Uh, it's got a lot of, like, you know, performers and stuff, got their posters around. Um, fairly clean. And again, like, you can tell that there's a lot of. Uh, like pencil sketches and stuff all over the walls uh, and there is a, a small desk with a great deal of art supplies on it. You would assume that Henry is probably the one in the family you know with his mother perhaps uh, who has a bit of an artistic tilt and you look and again something that we talked about was the biggest thing that is very very clear to you immediately in the room is there is this it's basically it's three feet in every dimension it's, you know it's basically in like it's in a cube it's this big cardboard diorama um, as you draw close to it you now see it in detail the top half is a city uh, I, and this thing is intricately made um, it's very, very well done. Like, you know, even as you look on the floor, the, the tiny, tiny little cut-off pieces of cardboard, some of them are so small. Like, someone was being very intricate with this. And you can see that all throughout the city on the top is this kind of... Uh, the city looks like it's been bombed out. It looks like it's a war zone. Um, you can... It looks like it's been torn down and destroyed. And all throughout it, you see people uh, in a very, like, kind of, you know, like you'd imagine, like, uh, people living in a war-torn country must, you know, look and feel like. And it's so dynamic. And there's little tiny cutouts of people all throughout it. Um, One of the, in the middle of the city is a, a hole that looks to be some type of lake. Or some type of water feature and all over it are little boats but the water goes down in this kind of tube in the middle of the diorama to the city on the bottom side and it seems that the two cities are kind of reflected over this lake in the middle of them and you see that throughout the lake like literally in like the space between there are boats not just on the quote unquote surfaces of this water but also moving throughout and you can see people swimming either down into the bottom city or up into the top city some on little boats you also see in the water you see giant imposing monstrosities 
when compared Jesus. to the tiny people in their boats. On the bottom layer of the city, it looks exactly the same, except everything is pretty much entirely intact. And at the kind of, not center, because the lake is kind of at the center, but the focal point is this big kind of... Um, God, what are those things called? Like, you know the you know what the Kremlin looks like, uh-huh. and it has those towers yeah, with like the a little, spire. It has the spires with like the bulb-shaped things on top. There's a word yeah. for that type of structure. <clears throat> I know what you're talking about. Um, and it has these like bulb-topped, this grand, incredible palace um, all around it. And in the palace, there looks to be a grand party going on. But outside the palace, you see machine gun nests and artillery pieces and active battle going on. But it kind of seems like the uh, the battle has yet to tear the city apart. So there's and battle on both sides. It looks like on the top side, the battle has mostly already destroyed the city. But on the bottom side, it has yet to get that far. There have been so many references it, to a war that didn't ha- that didn't happen in our reality. It happened in Carcosa. Uh, do y'all remember the Keeper of the Night Floors? Yeah, yeah. That's a, mm-hmm. yeah. There's definitely some like Carcosa is like in some other reality. It's like sounds like a Eastern European country that gets developed because of some war, or you know because of some other. There stuff. is like a. There's like some World War II adjacent event that happened. We yeah. read a book about that mm-hmm. too. You're thinking yeah. of uh of 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 Henri on um, Henri Castain, right? The night manager. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yes. Yep. And he got every time we talked. Like, to, which, sorry. Go ahead. No, I was just stating the obvious. That's the country where he came from. Yeah, well, he we told couldn't you as much. Yeah, and then it's like every time we try to get more detail, he got like far away look in his eyes. You know mm-hmm, that old fucking bastard. <laughs> uh, I imagine you guys are standing here around this diorama. Man, fuck that guy. <laughs> well, Cast on a. the plus side, it looks like we need some scuba gear eventually. <laughs> uh, yeah, Benji's gears Charles are not impressed. Um, y'all remember that that creepy six one six room? Uh, mm-hmm. How I dove into that mirror or painting, and there's a bunch of water. That's what I'm thinking. Is I'm wondering if water is a gateway to this uh, alternative universe. Well, and saying that, something that Benji would specifically remember is again this book, A World Without Doors. You remember in the book, the girl um, named Abigail, I believe. Uh, entered this strange world by drowning herself. And oh, uh, she would then I don't return know. she would then return by again drowning herself. The dream world, as it was called. Yeah. I didn't remember right, that detail. Here's what we gotta do. Y'all don't take me to that bathtub and stick me in that concoction and drown me. Fucking <laughs> oh, <laughs> drown me. Oh. <laughs> drown me in the good wine. The dad juice. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, <laughs> okay, is there anything... I don't know, should we look around this diorama? Is there anything that we can touch? Make me some type of search or alertness type thing if you want to get into the investigation in this room a little bit. This is why we have have these skills, Jean. Good ideas. Good ideas, Joe. Success. Successfully searched this diorama. Successfully searched. What did it yield? And Hank will do another, another success on search, so... Double success. Um, you guys are looking and both of your eyes are pulled to a small boat that seems to be kind of breaching the surface into the underside world with the palace. And on the boat, you see a figure that you can't quite say why. It's like, does that figure look familiar? Does that look, does that figure look like Abigail? Mm. Is that mm. Abigail, right? But like, the figure is so small, it's hard to even say, but part of you is just like, it's Abigail. You know something we 
Sorry. You got more. I was just going to say, as Benji, as these two are really digging this, Benji, you notice over on the desk that there are, and this is something that Benji, with his academic background and his occultic background, like just a combination of things, because in Delta Green, when your skills are really high, you don't have to roll things sometimes. Something that you notice, Benji, is that there is the makings of a quite prolific scrapbook here on the desk. There looks to be someone has put together some type of book. You can see all of the makings of it, but you don't see the book. Mm. Like, all the pages are there, just no covers? Like, the, the detritus, the leftovers from someone making a book are all here. You see even, like, some, like, calligraphy stuff, like, and it's like, it looks like Henry had made something, and maybe there's even, like, a strange kind of empty space in the middle of all of it, where it looks like someone would have had a workspace and there's nothing sitting there. Um, I did roll a search roll when they rolled, and I also got a success, and I wanted to focus on the rest of the room. Yeah. And so, um, and that that's, that's one of the big things, so you get the impression that, like, we're missing something. You There's don't book missing. find it in the room, mm-hmm. I'm going to tell you. You don't find it in okay. the room. You, if you toss the place, uh, you don't find it. Fellas, I think there's a book somewhere in this house. And it's probably pretty important that we find it. Mm. Okay. Benedict's going to uh, just... Benedict's going to just poke the diorama. Yeah, you poke the diorama. The diorama. The uh, it appears to be pretty stable. Oh. Uh, even if you pick it up, What's it made of? it's cardboard. Like cardboard and fishing line okay. and maybe like a little piece of gum wrapper here and there or something. Um, the whole thing doesn't weigh very much. You could actually pretty easily... It's a bit bulky to carry around, but not hard. Um, and it's pretty stable. Can Benedict just accidentally topple it over? Uh, all the pieces are glued in place. You could definitely step on it if you... Uh, <laughs> Is uh, Benedict the kind of psycho that's very that aggressive. kicks over to people's sandcastles? <laughs> he looks over at Benji and says, Benji, we're going to burn this place down anyways, so why not have a bit of fun? <laughs> I think it's a, it's like, I don't think Joe's doing this, but like all Joe has to do to keep us from doing something is suggest something with a smile on his face, and then we won't do it. <laughs> <laughs> I give them the eyebrows, and they're like, no, 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 no. <laughs> Uh, okay, sorry, Benji. So we need to look for this book, probably. Yeah. Um, nothing else of note in Philip's room, or in Henry's? You mean Henry's room? No, no. Like you know, maybe again, like these scraps. You feel like you're missing that something's missing, and that you should probably find it. And even in you know, thinking back about the recordings again, it's been two weeks since you know we met. Um, in the last, one of the things that was mentioned in the recording was that he said that he was making a book and that dad was helping. Yeah. I probably should have typed out the transcription of this and given Old this to you, but I'd forget. Father son bonding time. As, mm. don't you love cooking dad into a tea and then making a book with him? <laughs> Father son <laughs> bonding slime. <laughs> but us. <laughs> He doesn't have Very a Cthulhu good. poster. <laughs> Maybe he does. No. Does he have any weed? <laughs> you go through his drawers looking for weed. Where's the you stash? Some, <laughs> you find some weed it's in a sock. <laughs> and our, the whole scene turns so, into like the that '70s show as we're going like around in a circle. <laughs> but in the middle is the is the diorama. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. What do you guys? All right. Do? All right. On to do? why. Hold on, quick one. Why the fuck was there a sticky note of two times gangsters and four times bellhops on that tiny door? Why was that? I'm I'm not asking you, Joe. I'm asking my players. Well, <laughs> part of me wanted to do, um, like open it, close it two times, and see if it like another oh. another portal opens. Is what Every my time first you thought. Open it, it's, uh, it's like you know different. you have to do like. A, a consecutive combination and then it's like oh a different thing 
Yeah. Hank will go back in the room and do that Sorry. real quick on our way to the next yeah. bedroom. Why not? Yeah, I want to do not. that. I actually want to do that quick. Uh, you do that, nothing happens. But you do notice that the paper airplane's gone. The bottom on the carpet. Oh. Hmm. Is there anything for us? No. I, and the, I, I am getting more and more inclined to put a giant mechanical spider in here every time you guys come back to it. I'm, I'm going to be frank. Well, it's not up to you, Joe. It's up to the book, isn't it? It was in the book all <laughs> yeah, along, Sean. Book, right? <laughs> <laughs> all right. Let's go to... Uh... As, you, as you guys are thinking about this, you remember that there, and like as you kind of come back out into the landing where the sewing area is, you see some of these weird, you know, turn-of-the-century bellhoppy type outfits you know they have the double-breasted red you know with the buttons we see this where fez that comes with the sewing equipment in the looks. sewing room yeah any gangster outfits well jean i'm glad you ask as you kind of start digging through you find what very much looks like some like overcoats with some you know maybe some suspenders or something you would you would go so far to be like this looks kind of gangstery is that a fedora yeah. Mm. Huh. Yeah. yeah. See? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, should we throw two bellhop costumes and two gangster costumes down there? You don't have that. Like, if you look at the outfits, there's, like, scraps and unfinished ones. And I'm going to be frank, we are not going to turn this into a you sitting around making costume simulator. Uh, <laughs> we're not going down. Joe, this is our game. <laughs> As in all of us. This is what we want. This is how we have fun. Yeah. We want to go and change this to Sewing Simulator 2000. Sewing Simulator. Sewing Sim. All right, I'm I going to... the bobbin. Okay. Uh, Roll the, the thread the bobbin. Check. So we go to the other room. You go I to think. the other room. <laughs> okay. Search um, roll. You go to the other room. Do Yeah, do that search. Let's see what we got. Crit. 33 for Hank. All right, Hank, nice. f- Hank finds all the things. Um, first thing Hank does, walks across the room, grabs the edge of the mattress, pulls it up. <clears throat> this is where people keep things. What? You know, yeah. He's an investigator. Oh, smart. He's an investigator. You walk over, you pull it up, and there, plain as day, you see what looks to be a handmade book. This is it. Uh, Whoa. Damn, Hank. How'd you know it was there? That's... You just walked right over to it. Like you put it there yourself. Did you put it there <laughs> yourself? Yeah. <laughs> I had a... I love... Then no. Pulls his pistol I would hand. never... Yeah. Equally suspicious. I would never do this to make it seem like I'm a... A crack detective. <laughs> in front of my friends. Well, it was very badass. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> That's what it what would you guys do if you found out this entire time I was working with Brad and that he was behind everything? That Hank could not I would lose him. my shit. I would be very so, angry. I'd be upset with both they, of you. They but were also impressed. <laughs> they are fiddling with costume and Hank found the uh book in the kids' room and then hit it again and then yeah. just so he could come in and be like <laughs> <laughs> Bam Um The front of the book um, is in this kind of like fanciful, um, like calligraphy uh, type font, like hand on type font, is says the Phantom Saith is the title of this particular thing, and you see, you know, down about the bottom it says uh, by Henry and Philip Samahina. Oh God, this is gonna be some fucked up oh, shit. No. Let's slowly turn the page. I guess- you have to read it. The first thing you see is a big old fat yellow sign right there, large as life. Well, he's getting pretty Honestly. good at drawing this thing. I'll tell him that. I'll give him that. <laughs> yeah. With, as you go through it, it becomes very quick. It's going to take more than the gentle peruse, but I'm going to tell you that if, specifically if Benjamin is looking over your shoulder, this is the king in yellow. This is the book. It has a different name. This is plagiarism. This is plagiarism. This fucker's plagiarism. <laughs> he did this with like scraps. You mean, I, I thought I, when you said it was, 
I was picturing it was going to be like a picture book. When you were <laughs> he is an academic. <laughs> I love that. Wait a second. This this is an original work. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, it's like, and you know, and maybe, you know, Hank hearing Benjamin Benji exclaim that it's not original <laughs> work. Yeah, hearing it told to you that this is the King in Yellow, you know, you probably stop reading. Yeah. Hank would know. This is but, uh, this is like maybe it's not written as if it's a play, like it's not written in that way. Mm-hmm. But this is the story. Do we know that Benjamin uh, that Benji's read it at this point? I think so. Mm. Doesn't matter. He's okay. yeah crazy. Either oh, way, it matters. It matters. Because why is he not obsessed with the the guitar right now? Why is he not delved into this dark rabbit hole of putting things together? Well, and that, that's the thing. Like Benji, even as you, why is he still with us? Like Benji, even uh, as you yeah. look at it, like you can't help but see, like, yes, is it plagiarized in a way? I suppose, like maybe. <laughs> but there's a part of you. Maybe it's the artist part of you that you know Henry has definitely made it his own, in a way that's like it seems to be but even as your eyes go over the page you feel yourself being kind of drawn in an uncanny way to it these words still have power okay look away Benji (laughs) Uh, I don't I don't like it but I can respect it he really put his own spin on it (laughs) Yeah. Mm. But again, um, I'm going to tell you, like, if you go throughout the rest of the room, um, the only thing that you find is that as you guys look into the master bathroom, and I'll, I'll roll your critical success over to that, something does make sense to you now. In the recording that you heard of Henry, you heard a squeaking sound in part of it when he was saying, you know, Show me, show me more, show me. And then you heard this croaking voice. You know what that squeaking sound is now as you look at the mirror. It too was the sound of someone pulling their finger across glass as they traced the yellow sign. Son of a bitch. Chicken finger squeak noise. Chicken finger grease. This this is the se- we're back in the bathroom that had the um This is the master bath. It also has with the Yeah, with the it also has the tub of nasty crap. The juice. Yes. Oh. We briefly glimpsed somebody in a in a mirror way back when this been at least Benedict did. Yeah, we well we saw And then um, he smashed it. You originally had seen... No, that's right. You're talking about when you had pulled the mirror from Lewis Post's apartment mm-hmm. and you had seen the image of a man... Maybe killing Asa Darabondi. Man. Asa Darabondi. Mm-hmm. He was drowning someone. He was drowning someone. This is... Wow. That was like a year ago. <laughs> um, yes. Whoa. Whoa. Yeah. I just put a major piece of the puzzle together that seems obvious in retrospect. He was trying to send kids to Carcosa. Yep, that's what it seems like. Yeah. They also have a population problem. <laughs> they like Korea. They have yeah, they have they have a war going on, man. They need more kids. So I guess you got to get them in there. Yikes. Got to get them where you can find them. <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah, so you guys are standing here in this bathroom. Honestly, yeah. Uh, Hank is now, like, of... I know Benedict doesn't want to, but Hank's like, I really feel like we need to... I just don't know what else we're going to find in this reality. I feel like we need to go to Carcosa. I can't believe I'm saying this. All the night floors in some capacity. We have to get the wherever Broad Album is oh. right now, the hotel. No, this is madness. I would... I, I would... Yeah. Uh, I hate to say it, Benedict, but I agree with Hank. I think we gotta make it back there. 
We're running out of leads. What is the middle ground? I mean, straight to the source. We could we could go. We have so many leads here, guys. I would persuade against you. I would no, counter persuade no, no. you. I can't think of one. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> I will roll persuade against you both, Benedict. What would be to the... tell you there are many leads in our reality? Um, mm. could I get a sanity check from Benji Potts? Uh, what? Yeah. Why? What? What's what the happened? occasion? Uh, don't worry about it. Yeah. <laughs> he almost cracked the case <laughs> with his uh, I'm interpretation. Gotta punish him. Yeah. Gotta punish him. <laughs> yeah. No, it's gonna no. kill just off Benji. <laughs> just give me a sanity check and just tell me what you get. Okay. Sanity. Go. Bumble. Oh God. <laughs> Eighty-eight. <laughs> oh. Over thirty-eight. <laughs> okay, that could wow. not have gone better. <laughs> All right. uh, So, yeah. So, you guys are having this discussion. And at some point in time, you know, Benedict and Hank are, you know, are maybe starting to get a little loud with each other. Benji, you find yourself pulled over towards, you know, there's this four-sectioned mirror in this big, wide vanity. And all three three of them are broken. The one that has the yellow sign. You find yourself inexplicably. You find yourself kind of meandering over there, and you find yourself outlining your own fingers over the symbol of the yellow sign. Oh, Jesus. Over and over. And it isn't until you hear your name being called by either Hank or Benedict when you realize that you're about two knuckles deep into this mirror. Holy shit. Uh Uh-oh. And there is something on the other side that feels cold. Holy shit. Oh, my God. And that is probably a good place for us to stop. Oh, wow. (laughs) Nice. Nice. Nicely done. (laughs) Well done. Your boys are going through the looking glass. <laughs> <laughs> looking glass, boys. <laughs> <laughs> that was great. No, that was great. Right. Yeah, that was awesome. Yeah, it's, yeah, that's Fantastic. great. Fantastic. Everyone listening, everyone watching, those watching live, those listening or watching later. Man, thanks for being here. We really appreciate it. Um, it is. We uh, do. It's great to continue along this, and I'm glad you're losing your minds with us. It's good to know that we're sharing in the insanity and we don't suffer alone uh, that's always nice you know it's always nice to deflect our bonds which is to which is to you we, you watching you listening you are our bonds and we are deflecting onto you um, <coughs> hey if you uh, hey join our community come engage with us a little bit come over to r slash green box gaming it's kind of our headquarters come over to our twitter say hi we're also on instagram and tiktok all the links are on everything like it's on the links are on this episode the links are on twitter and on reddit blah 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 and if you really like what you're listening to you're called up and uh you want to get these episodes a week early you want to get some of the uh some of the patreon exclusive content consider coming over to patreon patreon.com slash greenbox gaming underscore no spaces and this is uh an opportunity i would like to uh i would like to tell you guys something do you guys want to hear something new something interesting Yes. Yeah, shoot. Sure. We are going to uh this is uh, this is going to be the official announcement, I guess. We are starting a new Patreon exclusive segment for our wonderful contributors over at Patreon that we are going to call the Sanity Check. Yes. This is going to be an opportunity. <laughs> this is an opportunity there he goes. <laughs> nice. I don't think anyone else can hear it, but we can hear it. This is an opportunity can hear it. for um, after uh, when we get done playing. Uh, this is just a kind of we're going to talk about our theories about what's going on. We're going to talk about Delta Green. We're going to talk about ourselves. We're going to get a little bit more of an, uh, maybe a more intimate look into our players' yeah, lives. Oh. Oh, yeah. huh. <laughs> Great. Huh. It's like an OnlyFans what's, deal. What's he got under that sweatshirt? That's that's what I'm wondering. That's, uh... <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so that is coming for our Patreon. So uh, our patrons. So stay tuned. But guys, guys, thank you. Thank Thanks you, so Joe. Good session. Thank you.
Appreciate it. And uh, for those watching live, uh, stay tuned. We're going to take a break and then be back for round two. For those listening, for those watching the pod later, thank you for joining us. Join us again next time for the next episode. And as always, stay safe. Stay sane. Bye. Later. Bye. Thank you.